Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I want to talk to you about two different applications that I believe when used together will supercharge your post-processing. The first app, and for those of you that follow my YouTube channel, you're probably very familiar with, is Luminar Neo. For those of you not familiar with Luminar Neo, it is a fantastic non-destructive image editor. And the application that I believe you should use with Luminar Neo is XR Photo. XR Photo is a digital asset manager, and for lack of a better term, it is like a library module on steroids. It does all those things you would expect from a library module. That is, you could give an image a pick flag or reject flag, a star rating, a color label. You could take a number of images and put them in a collection. You could take a few collections and put them into a group. So you could do all that stuff. But what really sets XR Photo apart is that when you bring a group of images into it, it uses AI to examine the contents of those images and it develops keywords for those contents. It will know when a, like a building is in the image or a lake or a river or a mountain or a tree or an animal and it will tell the difference between animals. It will know a lion is a lion and a giraffe is a giraffe. It will tell the difference between people and it will allow you to search for a specific person in your image library and that's what really sets it apart once it develops these keywords and puts the keywords to its database you could do lightning fast searches and you could find any image within a second or two you could have a hundred thousand image database and you know you have a single image of a macaw in a palm tree in front of a fire a waterfall and it will be able to find that image in a second or two that's what really sets XR Photo apart. And in today's video, I want to show you my workflow for using XR Photo and Luminar Neo together. Now, as you can see, I have XR Photo open. I already have some folders of images in it. What I want to show you first, though, is how to get a folder of images into XR Photo. Super easy. Just go over on the left hand side, see there's an add button, click on that. Then you have this dialog box. Just browse to the folder on your system. On uh, right here, I have a folder of waterfall images I want to add to XR Photo. I'll click open. Then I have some options. If I want to include subfolders, make sure that's on. Analyze photos, necessary to load keywords from file. This is important. This is where it looks at the image with its AI and determines what's in the scene and writes those keywords. So you want this on. Always create previews. I want to do that while it's being imported. You could have that off and create the keywords later, but do it now. It will save a lot of time. And click Start. And once I do that, you can see it's bringing in the image and it's populating uh, the screen here with the previews as it's creating them. Then if you look at the progress bar in the top left-hand corner, it's now analyzing the photos for those different elements that are in the image and creating the keywords. Now you can see it's done. It did 23 photos and it took 14 seconds. This is probably the most time consuming task you'll have in XR Photo because it has to go through each of those in images individually and create the keywords. But once it does, as I mentioned, you could do lightning fast searches. Now let me go to the entire database and let's just hover over an image and let me show you some features here. Hovering over this image, it kind of comes alive. You can see the top left hand corner, it's a raw file, it gives you the name. Then you have that two-person icon to the right of that. That's uh, for doing a search for a specific person. So if there were people in this image, I could search for a specific person in all of my images. Next to that is that magnifying glass. That's where I could find similar images. Lower right-hand corner is indicating this is a raw file. The one next to it is a JPEG, and you can see it doesn't say raw file there. Then here is where we would add those pick flags or reject flags. Just click on it. We could do the star ratings, color labels, reject, or pick flag there. But searches, that's really what we want to do. There's all different types of searches you could do. Let's demo a person search first. Let's go down and find a specific person I want to search for, which is my son, Joe, which is right here. See these four pictures of my son, Joe? I know I have seven photos of him in my database and I want to find them. So all I need to do is go on any of them and click on this little find people icon. When I do, I get the rectangle over his face. So you can move that if it's not over his face, or if you have multiple people, you can put the rectangle over the person's face you want to search for. 
Then you have options. If I only want images of him smiling, I could click here. But I know for a fact if I do click there, I won't get any images of him smiling because he never smiles in a photo. Um, only images with his eyes open or closed or no smile, so on. I, I want all the images of Joe. So I'm not going to check any of those. I'm just going to start the search. And you'll see, bam, it's done already. And there's the seven images. And what I find here very interesting is these first four were taken in my studio. And I believe he was around 20 or 21 when these were taken. These three were taken at Hoyt Lake. And I believe he was around 15 when those were taken. So you could see it still was able to know that all of those images of, are of the same person. When you do any searches in Xero Photo, it puts the results in the results tab, and it will stay there forever unless I want to remove it. Uh, that way you don't have to do the search again. They'll always be in this tab. To go back to all the images, you could just click here and go back to all your images. Now, there are other ways you could search. One of the other icons, the one next to the find people icon was to find similar photos. So let's go and find similar photos of these Eurasian links. So I'll click right here and you get the dialog box. I want to find all the images that are similar. You have some options you could do there, but I'm just going to start to search and bam, it's done already. It found all those similar images of the Eurasian links very quickly. And again, it puts all the results in the results tab. So they're there forever. There's the first search I did, and there's the second search I did. Now, some other searching we could do. Let's go back to the entire database and go over here to the right, and let's roll this XR um, triangle open. You can see that there's actually two tabs here, content and photography. If I open up photography, these are different types of photography terms. I have seven, seven images that have some type of bokeh in it. 95 images that are bright, three that are colorful, 57 of that are colorless. And by the way, colorless doesn't mean black and white. It just means they lack, it lacks color and so on. So you can see we have all these different types of photography terms, leading lines, high contrast, so on. But what I want to do is search for specific content. So I'm going to open this up and you can see that there's an animal tab and I'm going to go to the bird tab and I'm going to go to eagles. So we're just going to find all the eagles in my database. And see how fast it did it? Just like that. Now, I mentioned that you could do collections and you could put collections in groups. Let's do that very quickly. I'm going to create a group. I'm going to call the group birds. And I'm going to create a collection. And I'm going to call this eagles. And I'm going to take that collection and put it in that group. So if I roll that open, you can see it's inside of there. I'm going to click on one of the images, hit Command-A on my Mac, Control-A on the PC. So they're all selected and just drag them and put them in that collection of eagles. So now they're all there in that collection. So that's how you use collections. Pretty simple, right? Now, we did some relatively simple searches, right? If I go to the results tab, I you know, found similar photos. I found people, stuff like that. Well, what if I want to find um, images that by multiple keyword? Well, I could do that as well. Let's, let's close this down. See this little key icon? Click on that. And then what you do is you have some searches. And look, I already did one. I did a search for colorless images of big cats. And the way I did that, let me just show you how I did that. Go over here. I clicked on colorless. I rolled open the animals and I went to big cat and hit the plus sign to add that. I could add certain colors if I wanted to. Um, look for specific colors in the image. If I want to search the whole database or the current view, the folder I might be in or the collection I might be in. Uh, but I'll just do that. I could limit the number of results to, I'll limit it to 100, and I'll click Start Search. And when you do, you see instantly found all these images that are of a big cat and rather colorless. And this happens to be of a snow leopard. And you can see that it put the um, results in the results tab under find keyword. So very, very simple and very quick, very quickly, you could do these searches. And once you're done in the library module of, or if I should say, once you're done in Xire Photo, it's kind of like a library module, right? Is you might want to then edit some photos. And let's do that. Let's find an image to edit. I want to do two different images. I want to show you some of the um, portrait capabilities 
love Luminar Neo because it is so easy to edit a portrait in Luminar Neo. I want to demonstrate it. Also, I know many of you are landscape photographers, so I want to edit a landscape image as well. Now, I love this photo of my son, Joe, so I want to edit this one in Luminar Neo. To do that, simply click on it, then right-click on it, and go to Open With and go to Luminar Neo. And you'll see that it will open up in Luminar Neo, and it will put us in the Presets tab. Now, I don't want to use a preset on this. I want to edit it from start to finish. So I'm going to go to the Edit panel, and looking at it, I think exposure is pretty much perfect. So I really don't need, and color balance is good. I don't want to do anything with develop. I'm going to jump right down to the portrait tools and I'm going to go to face AI. With face AI, I want to lighten up his face or brighten it. So I'll put a face light on there. Then I'm going to go to his eyes. And with his eyes, I want to add an iris flare. That's going to add a little bit of light at the bottom part of his iris. As you can see. And I don't need to enlarge his eyes. I do want to whiten them a bit. And then I'm going to go to Eye Enhancer and Enhance. Now, I don't want to go too crazy and give them like marbles. But I do want them enhanced. Doesn't have red eyes. Uh, dark circle removal. A little bit. We'll get rid of that. His eyebrows will improve that. Just makes him darker, a little sharper. Then we'll go to Mouth. He's not showing his teeth because, of course, he's not smiling. But we'll add a little lip saturation, a little lip redness little lips darkening. That looks pretty good. So we're done with the face AI. Next, we'll go to skin AI and we'll add some skin smoothing. You can see that. And you can see like this little like mole or freckle up here, a couple little marks. Just click on skin defects removal. Bam, gone. A little bit of shine in his face here and here. I'll get rid of that with the remove shine removal. And actually, I'm pretty much done. Here's a before. And here is an after, before, after. Now, if I wasn't speaking in this microphone and I just came from XR Photo into Luminar Neo to process this portrait, I guarantee I could have done it in less than a minute. That's how powerful the portrait editing tools are in Luminar Neo. And when they were first introduced, I was so impressed with these. I, they just save so much time. Now, I'm really done with the image, but I want to see what it looks like in black and white. So I'm going to go up here to black and white. I'm going to convert it to black and white. Ah, I really like that. Move red to the right. That'll probably make his face a little brighter. And yellow to the right will make his face. And blue will make his eyes, probably affect his eyes. You could see that. Yep, yeah, I'm done. So when you're done with your image in Luminar Neo, just close down Luminar Neo. Those edits will stay there forever. They're in the written into the Luminar Neo catalog. But what you'll find is when you return to XR Photo, the thumbnail doesn't update. It doesn't show you the edited image. And by the way, you could just kind of click on that too to see it like this. Now, it's not showing us the edited image, um, which is actually a good thing because XR Photo doesn't read Luminar Neo's catalog. You don't want it to. You don't want it to write its own keywords into Luminar Neo's catalog and, and pollute it. You don't want it to access the catalog because you run the risk of it corrupting the Luminar Neo catalog. And if the Luminar Neo catalog is corrupted, you will lose all your edits. So you don't want it to do that. So what I recommend you do is come down here and give it a color label or star rating or give it a flag that indicates that it has been edited in Luminar Neo. I'll give it a red color label. So that's telling me that this image has edits done to it in Luminar Neo. And let's, as I mentioned, I want to do a landscape image as well. Let's do this one right here. So again, to get this into uh, Luminar Neo, just right click right on it and go to open with and go to Luminar Neo. And it will open it up into the presets tab of Luminar Neo. Of course, I don't want to use a preset. I want to go to edit. And there's a lot of powerful tools for those of you not familiar with Luminar Neo to edit a landscape image. Uh, in this case, like a seascape image. We'll go to the Develop Raw tab. These are the, this is a good place to start. We're going to open up shadows, bring highlights down, maybe not that much. And maybe add a little bit of contrast. We're going to go to the Blacks and Whites tab. And I want to turn the clipping indicators on. And to do that, I'm going to hit the J key on my keyboard. And 
For instance, now with the clipping indicators on, as I bring blacks down, if I go too far, I'll start to get a, a blue overlay on the image, and that's telling me I'm crushing the shadows. Of course, you do not usually want to crush the shadows, so you want to move that till that blue is gone. Similarly for whites, if I move it too far to the right, maybe even add exposure to the image, you'll see that we're starting to get some red in the highlights. That means we're blowing out those highlights, and you definitely don't want to do that, so you want to bring that down. Like that. Now, I don't think I need to do anything with curves. I'm not going to add any color to it. Um, I will make it a little sharper, though. So I'll add some sharpening. And noise reduction was shot at ISO 64. I don't think I need that, but I do have the noiseless extension here. If I wanted to use, um, if I wanted to reduce noise, I would use the noiseless extension that is available for Luminar Neo. But I will go to optics and I'll check all these boxes auto distortion correction, auto fixed chromatic aberrations, and auto defringe. So it looks pretty good. Now I think what I want to do is I want to add structure, but I only want to add it to the lighthouse and like the bricks down here and the bricks over here and maybe like to the break walls over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the structure tool. I'm going to go to masking. I'm going to go to mask AI. This is where Luminar Neo uses its AI to determine the elements in a photo. And then I'll be able to do edits to just the elements I want to edit. And once it's done, you'll see we'll get a list of elements over here. And as I mentioned, I specifically want to do the architecture, right? So I'll click on that and you'll get this red overlay. And it, it has the lighthouse and the bricks, just like I wanted some of the brick wall over here. And if I wanted to do the sky, the water, I could just do another structure tool instead of this one. This one's going to be dedicated to just the lighthouse. And then I could do a second one for the sky and so on. But I think we'll just go, whoops, didn't want to do that. Go back to masking, mask AI. So I got to do it over because I screwed up. So then we got to do architecture and then we go to adjustments and then we're going to add some structure to that. And you could see it adding structure. You could see the difference there. That looks pretty good. I think I want to finish this off with a vignette. I like to add a darker vignette to my images just to draw everyone's attention more towards the middle of the image. And there is a before and there's an after. Before, after. That's it. I'm done. And I'll close down Luminar Neo. I'll return to XR Photo and I'll be sure to go here and give this a red label. That means it has been edited in Luminar Neo, so I know. And that's it. That's my workflow for using XR Photo and Luminar Neo together. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.